BL Heli 32 is just about to release a new feature called by RPM variable PWM frequency. And I'm working on another video about what that is. That's not this video. What this video is about is not all ESCs are going to be able to support this feature. And if you're buying an ESC today, you're going to want to make sure you get one that can support this feature. That's what we're going to talk about in this video. And while we're at it, we're just going to go over some of the other things you need to be thinking about when you're shopping for a BLH32 ESC. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. I know you click this video because you want a concise guide to how to pick the right BL Heli 32 ESC in 2022. And that's what I'm going to give you. But I do need to make sure you know before we go into it that by RPM variable PWM frequency is not the same as the variable PWM frequency that got released in BL Heli 32 32.8. And the reason I point that out is because Variable PWM frequency is a good thing. It has a lot of potential to give you awesome efficiency and power at high throttle, great braking performance at low throttle, and no compromises in between. But the way that BLH32.8 implemented it had a problem that is solved by by RPM variable PWM frequency, and that's why that feature is so important and why you want to make sure you're getting an ESC that supports it. But you can't just buy any 32.8 BL Heli 32 ESC because they're not all gonna support it. So what do you need to look for? This Holy Bro Teco 32 ESC is an example of one that does support this feature. And the two things you're looking for, number one is that it is an F4 processor. You see here, this is an F4 ESC. This is the same F4 processor that is on many flight controllers today. They started putting them on ESCs. It's interesting because I think the main reason they started putting them on ESCs is just because of the component shortage in 2021. They couldn't get the normal processors that, that they put on the ESCs, so they just were like, well, let's upgrade. And they, this is a more expensive, higher performance processor that until recently really didn't have any purpose. But to this, this feature, the by RPM variable PWM frequency, is the first feature that is exclusive to these F4 processors because they're the only ones that are fast enough to do it. The way to be really sure, though, is to look for the PWM frequency spec that the ESC supports. And I see that that's not listed here. So let's find another ESC that's a good example of that. Here's the Diatone Mamba F65 Pro ESC. And you can see here it doesn't say that it's an F4 processor. But if we look at the PWM frequency spec, it says 24 to 128K. And the key thing here is that it is it's not just 128K. You see, with the slower processors, ESCs could only do a narrow range of PWM frequencies. So there are ESCs out there that list themselves as 128K, but it's only like 96 to 128K. ESCs that can do the full 24 to 128K PWM range will also be able to correctly support this feature. So those are the two things you're looking for, an F4 processor or and or a listing of 24 to 128K. If the ESC doesn't have those features, it will not be able to fully support by RPM variable PWM frequency. And uh, if at least if you're looking for the best performance, I would avoid them today. Obviously, you can buy less expensive, lower spec ESCs, and they'll still be great. But if you're trying to get the latest and greatest, this is what you're looking for. Next, we're going to talk about the other things you want to look for when you're shopping for a BLH32 ESC. But before we do that, if that little tip about the PWM frequency and the F4 processor helped you out and you think more people need to hear that tip, can I ask you to go down there, hit the like button. It's going to help YouTube know that more people should see this, and uh, I would sure appreciate it. Thanks so much for doing that. Once you've made sure that your ESC is going to be able to support by RPM variable PWM frequency, the next thing to do is to think about the size. And the size is probably going to be dictated by the frame that you've chosen. BLH32 ESCs mostly come in three sizes, 20 millimeter, 30 millimeter, or 25 millimeter toothpick size. And the toothpick size is mostly going to be used on smaller frames, uh, specifically like three inch toothpick style quads, but also on up to four inch and even some ultra lightweight five inch where size is a concern. The big characteristic of these toothpick flight controllers is that they are generally all in one at the ESC and the flight controller is one unit. You want to be careful though, because many of these are BL Heli S, not BL Heli 32 in order to keep the price down. 
As far as size goes, the main reason to choose a 30 millimeter is that the larger form factor tends to make them more durable, more resistant to damage. It's not that you can't build a durable 20 millimeter ESC, it's just that odds are the 20 millimeter ones are gonna be less durable just because they use smaller FETs and they just have less room to put components on the board. Unfortunately, it's difficult to know whether an ESC is going to be reliable until people start buying it and beating the crap out of it and seeing whether it breaks. Two of the best that are available today include the Redux Air 32 Nano, and this is an F4 processor with full 128K PWM support. Uh, the other one that comes to mind is the Foxeer Reaper, which is favored by many racers and is reasonably durable, but it doesn't actually seem to support the full 128K PWM frequency. So at least for the purposes of this video, we would pass on it. One spec you're probably not going to have to think about when shopping for ESCs is the voltage rating. Almost all BLH32 ESCs made today are rated for between 3 and 6S voltage. If by chance you run across an ESC that's only rated for 4S voltage, you would want to be aware of that if you're using a higher voltage. And of course, if you're building a quadcopter with higher than 6S voltage, you're probably using a more specialized ESC and you may not even be using BL Heli 32 now we come to what might be the most confusing spec of all the ESCs, which is the amp rating. And the first thing you need to know about the amp rating is that you cannot buy an ESC with an amp rating that is too large, only an amp rating that is too small. Sometimes people say, I have a 30 amp ESC on my quad and I want to replace it, but the only thing I can buy is a 50 amp ESC. Is it going to push too much current and fry my motors? That's not how it works. The amp rating is a maximum. The motors will pull however many amps they want to pull to do the work that they are doing. And if the ESC amp rating is too small, the ESC will fry itself and maybe fry the motors along with it. But if the ESC amp rating is too high, well, there's no such thing as too high. It will be high enough to handle the amps that the motors are pulling and all will be well. So one rule of thumb is just buy the biggest amp rating possible and everything will be fine. And there's actually a little bit of truth to that because the higher the amp rating of an ESC, the more resistant it's gonna to be to damage from things like voltage spikes. The thing is, the amp rating on almost all of the ESCs that we buy is way more than we actually need. So for example, take a look at this T-Motor Velox 50 amp ESC. It's rated for 50 amps, and as a four in one ESC, that 50 amps is for each of the motors. So it could be rated for 200 total amps. If you look at the C rating of your battery, it probably isn't gonna provide 200 amps for more than a fraction of a second. And it, you're just not gonna be able to exceed this ESC's amp rating under most normal conditions. In fact, based on the batteries, if we think about five inch mini quads, based on the batteries that we're using, most of us would probably be fine with like a 30 or 35 amp ESC. So why do you ever buy a bigger one? And the answer is, the exceptional circumstances. Exceptional circumstances like a big full throttle punch perhaps, but more like when you like hit a branch or your, and, and your motors surge suddenly or you, uh, uh, your prop is blocked and you're trying to turtle mode out of a tree and you're just kind of going bah, 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 and the quad is just bah, 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 banging the props against the, uh, the, the, the branches. And the, oh, there's all these voltage and current spikes as you're abusing the ESC. And higher, a higher amp rated ESC is gonna be able to handle that better. So definitely do buy the highest amp rating you can afford. But if it's a $5 difference between a 50 amp and a 60 amp ESC, you may not. You may not need to do that. You'll probably be fine with a lower amp rated one. The other thing to know is that these amp ratings are extremely marketing influenced, and there's no reason to assume that a 60 amp ESC from one manufacturer will perform exactly the same as a 60 amp ESC from another. The design of the ESC, the quality of the components and so forth plays a much bigger role than this number. At the beginning of this video, I described by RPM, variable PWM frequency, as a killer feature of BL Heli 32 that you did not want to miss. But there's a problem. You can't actually use it today as of the day I'm making this because it's not released to the public, except you can. I've made a tutorial telling you how to take advantage of this feature, and I'm going to put a card on screen linking to it if you want to check that out. I'll also go into more detail in that video about what PWM frequency is and how it affects 
the performance of your quad. Uh, if today is the day that I have earned your subscription on Patreon, I'm also going to put a card on screen linking to my Patreon. Patreon is a website where you can subscribe to me for as little as $2 a month. If today's not the day, keep watching content. I give away all my content for free, and hopefully someday that day will come. Thanks for watching. Happy flying.